Welcome back everyone. This is Mindy Egan for Tailored Expressions and in today's video I'm going to show you how I created a couple of these cards using products from the Farm Fresh card kit that are now being released to the Tailored Expressions store in individual products. Some of the products that I'll be using today are the Farm Fresh Critters, Farm Fresh, and the Fireworks Background and this is a stamp and a stencil set. I'll also be using the stencils Set the Scene, Grass, Breezy, and the Masking Rectangle Stencil. The inks that I'm going to use are Oreo, Sprinkles, Peapod, Granny Smith, and I will also be using pineapple, but I forgot to show you, but I will be using pineapple later. And then some of the supplies are the blending brushes, an adhesive, and some low-tech adhesive for my die cutting. I'm going to start by laying out the images that I think I might want to use. So I have a piece of sugar cube cardstock laid into my Misty stamping tool. I removed the foam insert that is in the Misty because these are foam mounted so you don't need the extra cushion and I am making sure to space these out so that my dies when I lay them down to die cut these images out I don't want the dies to overlap so I just want to make sure I space them out nicely then I can ink them up with the Oreo ink which is uh, Copic safe since I will be using Copic markers and I'm going to stamp them onto my sugar cube cardstock. Now I'm actually going to only end up using the cow and the pig, so that is the coloring that I'm going to show you. I'm starting with N8 and N5 for the spots on the cow. I decided to go with black and white, but you could certainly make this a brown cow, brown cow as well. So I'm keeping my darker color to the outside edge of the cow and then the lighter edge towards the inside. So it's going to be the highlight area is towards the center. I also colored in the little tips of the tail and the hooves and for the muzzle I was experimenting with a new color combination for me and that's E93 and E00 so it's got kind of a pinkish tone to them the E93 the higher E90s I always kind of forget about and I thought it was just a really good color to use either for ears or the horns I will be using as well and it was a really nice just kind of really faint, faint pink color to use now this image is really easy to color up because the black and white that I'm going for, I don't need to have a lot of Copic coloring for it. So I'm going to bring in just some light grays to color in the body and the head of the cow. I will be using C2 and C0, once again starting on the outside edge of the cow and just kind of flicking in with that C2. And then I'll extend that out just a little bit with the C0. You can see that I'm leaving a lot of white space to this. Now I'm going to color in the pig. And I'm starting with E97, E95, and E93. And these colors are next to each other quite a bit in the Copic line. So you're not going to see a drastic color change. I typically will go for drastic contrast, but this was just a really nice blend to give me kind of a light and a dark shade. Once again, starting from the outer edge and blending in towards the center, starting with the darkest color and then going in towards the center with the lightest color. I'm using E97 again uh, for right along the arms and the body and then blending those out. And I will come back with my N4 and 5 and color in those hooves just a little bit. Now on the fence, I'm going to have a white fence. So I'm just taking my C2 and I'm adding just a line of color to one side of that fence. I did not do a lot to it at all. Then for die cutting, I'm just going to line up the coordinating dies, hold it in place with low tack tape and die cut those out. Now I'm going to work on the background of my first card and this is using the fireworks background. So I started by placing my background in the Misty. And then I lined up my cardstock on top of my background. I put a little bit of adhesive on the back of that paper and then flipped my Misty over. This is going to allow me to place my cardstock on there where I want it on the background. And that little bit of adhesive is going to stick to the back of the Misty or the bottom of the Misty so it stays in place. Then I can ink this background up with the pineapple ink. 
And this is such a cool background. This would be great to leave as is. And you'll see here it's got little stars and little speckles. It's a beautiful background, but I'm going to step it up just a little bit and I'm going to add the fireworks to it. So that's going to be the coordinating stencil to line up with it. Now this is layer one. There are two layers to the fireworks and I will show you in just a moment, but there's a little etched star so that you can line up these stars on the stencil with the stars of your card. I took a little bit of low tack tape, applied it to the back of my card so it sticks to my surface, and then I'm lining up those etched stars over the stars on my cardstock. And then I can just hold my stencil down with that low tack tape. Now, typically you might see these fireworks with a more of a 4th of July theme, but I'm thinking it'd be really fun for a birthday card. So I'm starting off with a Granny Smith and I'm using a blending brush to apply that ink. I'm just lightly swiping across the ink pad or dabbing onto the ink pad and then in circular motion, applying that ink over my stencil in those areas of the fireworks. And these are gonna layer together to create just a really beautiful color combination. So once I have these all finished and I have all my fireworks on this first layer, uh, ink blended on there, I'll remove that stencil and now I'm going to bring in the second layer. So here's a close up look. You can see there's a little etched star on there. It's really easy to see in person. It's just harder on camera. So I lined those stars up again and now I'm applying the sprinkles ink with a blending brush. I think this is a really versatile set because you can use it for, like I said, 4th of July, the birthday, any type of celebration or New Year's. You could also apply any type of glitter paste over this if you wanted to add sparkle or even some foiling. Then I can remove that post-it tape and remove my stencil. And I'm going to trim this background down to about three and three quarters by five inches. And I will be adding it to a piece of Granny Smith cardstock that I have cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. But first I'm going to start with stamping my sentiment. And that can be tricky sometimes with the red rubber stamps. So I'm going to show you how I do it. And that is first lining it up on my card front where I want it to go. I'm using the lines of the Misty tool to... Uh, just slightly adjust it and then I'm going to bring in I have a transparency sheet on here that's why it looks a little funny on top of my card this is just a transparency I laid over the top of my card I stamped that sentiment in Oreo ink looking at it bringing in some of my pieces I'm going to have on my card front to just kind of check if that sentiment is straight or not now I did go over and I kind of moved it slightly I'm going to wipe this clean I'm going to stamp it again to see if it lines up straight. So I just slightly move it every now and then until I feel it is straight. And then I can remove that transparency and stamp it down onto my card front. After my sentiment is stamped out, I'm just gonna take the tape runner and adhere my fence and also the body of the cow. I kept this really nice and flat and clean and simple because I'm gonna make this a little interactive. I'm gonna add a little fun to this. There were some wobbles, I believe, in the card kit, and I still think that that is a really great idea to add these little wobblers. So these are uh, self-adhesive. You just remove the backing of that adhesive, attach it to the head of your cow, and then remove the backing on, that, on the back of it, and you can attach that right over the body of the cow. So that's why they come uh, in two separate stamps like that so you can make that really fun to play with and an interactive card. Next, I'm gonna create just a small scene on my card front and I'll be using the masking rectangles for this. Instead of lining this up in the center of my card, which is typically what I would do, I'm lining it up towards the bottom left corner. I held that down with post-it tape and then I'm lining up one of the stencils from Set the Scene Grass. And I'm ink blending first with the Granny Smith ink, just adding a really light layer. You could also put some masking tape above that open area if you're worried about uh, getting any ink on there because that's going to be our sky. Then I'm adding in the Peapod ink just towards the bottom. And after I removed my grass, I'm adding a light layer of Sprinkles ink to my sky background. And then I'm gonna bring in the breezy stencil. And I thought this just was a really cool thing to add. Instead of just normal clouds, we kind of have a cool design for our sky background. And then once I reveal both of the stencils, you'll see this really cool masked off scene on the front of our card. Now I'm gonna repeat the same steps I did for stamping the sentiment. 
I lined that up in the Misty, kind of got an idea where I wanted that sentiment to go. And this time I brought over just one of my protectors that I keep my stencils in. So any type of clear acetate or packaging will work for this. And then stamping that down and you'll see I'm just kind of fidgeting with it, lining it up. Once I'm happy with that placement and I had tested it out, I can go ahead and stamp that down onto my card front. That way I know it's exactly where I want it to be and it's going to be perfectly placed. Then after I have that done, I just attached my fence and the body of my pig with that tape runner and once again adding one of these fun little wobblers to the back of the head. That'll finish off my two cards for you today. I hope this gives you some ideas of how you can use these farm fresh critters with maybe some other stamps and stencils that you have in your stash. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll catch you again real soon.